It's finally time for our main event. Zab Judah against Floyd Mayweather. Judah has campaigned for two years at welterweight, including his biggest win over Corey Spinks and his worst loss to Carlos Baldemir. Mayweather has fought only once at 147 pounds, but few predict the added weight will bother him tonight. Judah versus Mayweather is being brought to you by Caesars Palace Las Vegas, live famously. Win Las Vegas Resort and Country Club by Corona Extra, miles away from ordinary, and by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. Fans of Zab Judah hope for a return to form. That would be the slick technical style which saw Judah wrest the undisputed welterweight championship away from Corey Spinks, rather than the lackluster defensive performance in which he lost to Carlos Baldemir in January. No one questions Floyd Mayweather's form in championship fights. From Gennaro Hernandez through Diego Corrales, Jose Luis Castillo, Mayweather has been in with the best and has beaten them all. At ringside again, once again, with our special expert commentator tonight, former world heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. Lennox, uh, conventional wisdom is that Zab Judah has at best a puncher's chance in the fight. Now, he's not exactly Jack Dempsey as a puncher. Uh, and obviously, conventional wisdom is that Mayweather is a truly great boxer. So, even though Judah sees himself as the bigger, stronger man, how real is his puncher's chance? How big is his chance against a great boxer like Floyd Mayweather? Well, usually when they say you don't have a puncher's chance, you, you, you have a puncher's chance. And that's what the main thing is about. When you throw a punch out there, when a, a exchange is going on, and you throw a punch out there, there's always that chance that you may catch the other opponent. And that's what they say when they mean a puncher's chance. But I believe that Zab Judah is going out there, he's trying to win the fight. So he likes to be the underdog. Like he said, he's a clutch player, and this is what he's going to go out there and prove. We shall see if Judah is the kind of clutch player who can get this done. Probably no one in the sport is more skeptical than you. So why, why do you think that Judah's supposedly slim puncher's chance is slimmer than the way other people see it? You've noticed. I, I, I know you. <laughs> it's simple. Mayweather is an A-plus fighter. Judah is a few grades below that. Plus... He has a mouthful of 20 carats worth of diamonds. Unfortunately, they are in a setting of glass. And in his fight against Baldemir, he seemed to be clueless. And further, as Mayweather put it, this is flawless against jawless. <laughs> well, interestingly, neither fighter brought his trainer to yesterday's fighter meetings. Both fighters are trained by family members. And in both instances, the relationships are sometimes in and out. But both trainers are very interesting, so let's take a look for a moment at their bios and consider their possible influence on the fight. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was trained at the beginning of his professional career by his father, Floyd Mayweather. Ultimately, they didn't get along at all. So Uncle Roger Mayweather was brought in to become the trainer instead, and Roger, by his own estimation has done a great job with Floyd. Uh, Ten years as a trainer, trained Hasim Rahman at one time against uh, John Ruiz. Uh, he himself was a terrific right-hand puncher as a fighter who was known for a while as the Mexican assassin because he had a kind of cottage industry going, fighting Mexican fighters before largely Mexican-American crowds in Los Angeles, wearing the black hat as the villain and beating them. He's a guy who likes competitive pressure. He definitely has done a fine job as Floyd Jr.'s trainer. And just as Floyd Mayweather is trained by a former professional boxer, in fact, has been trained by two former professional boxers, Zab Judah is trained by his father, who is a former world kickboxing champion. 20 years as a trainer, has trained a couple of other noteworthy fighters. But Larry Merchant, both of these guys, Roger Mayweather and Yoel Judah, are essentially, in the minds of the boxing public, one fighter trainers. Roger trains Floyd. Yoel trains Zab. They don't have a broad influence elsewhere in the sport. What is their meaning in tonight's fight? I think that Yoel Judah, as a former kickboxing champion, did not train his son in the schooled arts of boxing. His son, Zab, has an unorthodox style dependent on his athleticism, whereas Mayweather comes from a family of fighters and boxers. 
and they raised their, their son and nephew from the time he was in the crib throwing jabs and left hooks with rattles to be the fighter he is, a classic boxer with a punch. Now we filled two minutes there so that they could find the person who was supposed to sing the national anthem. <laughs> Let's go into the ring to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, would everyone please rise at this time for our national anthem to be performed here by our very special guest. A round of applause for Mr. Kavan Edmonds. I would uh, like to dedicate uh, my performance of the national anthem to all the troops here at home and abroad who are fighting for and defending our way of life. All righty? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Who were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the Tale of the tape for Zab Judah against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And you can see the one-year age advantage for Judah, if you want to call it an advantage. The bottom line is they are both in the peak years of their careers. They have known each other, according to Judah, since he was eight years old, meaning for 20 years. For the, most of the 20 years, they were friends. Definitely not now. Height, a one-inch advantage for Mayweather. Arm length. A four-inch advantage for Mayweather, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Remember, Judah thinks he's the bigger, stronger man. They weighed in under the 147-pound limit, both of them. Tonight, neither guy has gained much, meaning that they trained well and are in superb condition for the fight. Judah at 150. Mayweather unofficially weighs the same tonight that he did yesterday. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Zeb Judah Floyd Mayweather fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and it cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. In an odd piece of boxing politics, because Zab Judah still holds a welterweight title belt despite losing to Carlos Valdemir in January in Madison Square Garden, Floyd Mayweather walks first tonight.
Very odd in a way, Lennox, to see the world's best bound-for-bound -bound fighter walking first. Walk first, walk second, does it make any difference? Well, to me, it made, always made a difference because I always like the other opponent to wait for me to come into the ring and watch me come into the ring. While he's in the ring trying to, you know, stay calm, he's still dealing with the pressures of the outside crowd and everything. And, you know, the last guy in the ring always says that he's the best because the last, last guy always comes to the ring the last. The best guys always come to the ring the last. But if anything bothers Floyd Mayweather, you're never going to know it at a moment like this. His level of relaxation, as we mentioned earlier when he was smiling and laughing walking into the arena, is enormous for this kind of task. The outfit looks a little bit more like Christmas than, uh, than April. <laughs> But maybe Floyd is planning to give us all a big gift. Well, he certainly is going to get a big gift. He's guaranteed five million. And we'll make more if the pay-per-view sells well, Larry. Make more, but more, more important, I think, to him is how he performs and whether, in fact, he becomes a true pay-per-view star. Fighters like Hopkins didn't and Jones didn't and Mosley didn't, all terrific in their own way. And maybe Mayweather will break through, especially with the heavyweight division in the shape it's in today. Zab Judah held the title at 140 pounds, held the unified welterweight championship before losing that totally unexpected upset when he was a 20 to 1 favorite against Carlos Baldemir in New York in January. And one thing Zab wants to live down here in Las Vegas was the embarrassment of what happened to him when he fought Costa Zoo here. And he was knocked down in the second round, knocked loopy by a zoo right hand. And when referee Jay Mady stopped the fight, Zab Judah threw a chair at Mady and went after him and put his hands around his throat. Why is that significant tonight? Well, it's significant because the referee for the fight is not Jay Mady, <laughs> it's Richard Steele. And, and also because Zab wants to put on the kind of performance that would eliminate what happened against Zoo from any future discussion. What also is significant is that his guarantee went from three million to one million after the loss to Baldemir. And there reportedly are IRS fans here ready to seize most of that. It's quite a gathering. Bob Arum promoting with Don King. Much hip hop royalty in the audience. The IRS waiting to see where the money goes. And we're ready for more of Michael Buffer and the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thomas and Max Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, tonight by way of Caesars Palace and Win Las Vegas. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Don King Productions are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF. Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by La Cerveza Mas Fina, Corona Extra, and presented in association with HBO Pay-Per-View. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman, Skip Avancino Jr., Executive Director, Mark Ratner. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest on the 10-point system are Glenn Hamada, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action inside the ring, your referee, Richard Steele. And now, for the sold out thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, official weight, 146 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 35 bouts. 35 victories, including 24 knockouts from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The challenger, former super featherweight world champion, former lightweight world champion, former light welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated pretty boy, Floyd.
And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with red, official weight, 145 and one half pounds. An outstanding professional record. 34 victories, including 25 knockouts, only three defeats and one no contest. From Brooklyn, New York, three-time world champion, former two-time light welterweight champion of the world, and now the reigning, defending, IBF welterweight champion of the world, Zab Super Okay, I can see both of your labels. Anything on this belt is a low blow. Keep your punches up. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck. Go. How do you attack a great boxer like Mayweather? Will Judah just try to put pressure on him, not give him room? Or will he try to box him? and hope to land a big punch. Two spectacular looking athletes. Both clearly in superb condition for this bout. Both wearing leather trunks. Which makes you sweat and could tire you out, right? Yep, definitely sticks to you. They are heavy. But they're stylish. That's, I'm sure, what mattered. And you see that Judah is a southpaw. Floyd Mayweather fights out of a conventional stance. One thing to remember about that style confrontation, in conventional wisdom, the most effective punch against a southpaw stance is your straight right hand. And Floyd Mayweather, over the course of the past three or four years, has become increasingly aggressive and tremendously effective with straight right hands. On the other hand, Judah will try to throw straight left hands up the gut against Floyd Mayweather. There's a right hook by Judah. Larry, you have a theory that Judah is gonna try to come in hard and impose his size and power on Mayweather. Do you see it yet? Well, I think if he finds out that he's being outboxed, he'll have no other choice, at least some kind of show of, bra of bravado to try to, to uh, regain respect that he has lost on several occasions. He did say to us in a fighter meeting, there'll be no feeling out process. Lennox, do you see a feeling out process here? Oh, only by Mayweather. I, I think he's just trying to set up for his punches right now, and he's definitely got that quick right hand that he loves to throw so often. Straight, quick right hand, and that always is always popular against the southpaw. There's Judah with the straight left hand, the first big power throw of the fight. Judah jabbing and getting blocked every time by Floyd Mayweather's left glove. He caught all those jabs with the glove. I think Judah is, is fighting with a very, uh, in a very confident way that he thinks that his speed can match up with Mayweather's speed. It's rather a question of whether the skills can match up. And there was the first straight right hand down the pipe by Floyd Mayweather. Thrown more or less as a direction finder. Floyd said he's on a mission this fight and uh, this is the first round of his mission. We're just gonna have to see. Judah landed a left hand and then wrapped Floyd up in his grip and almost bent him over backward onto the canvas. Mayweather just sort of smiles and dances away. Mayweather was feeling with his jab there for a second as though looking for a light switch in the dark. And then said, okay, I'll just stick it onto your body. Not much round. happened in round one, but what happened seemed to favor Zab Judah. 
Zab was very. Water, 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 water. He kept his composure in that round. I was very proud of him. He, he, looked, he looked good. Just stay with that jab. Yes, yes, yes. He's scared of you now. He's scared. Listen, keep it going up and down. Keep that left. But you want to keep pushing two and three, and then let that left hand go in the short hole. Don't worry about the time. He's going to walk back. He's going to pull off everything. Just push it. Push it. Look, thing. It's quite smart. Yeah. So you got to be looking to load up with the left hand. Don't worry. We'll see it out the gate. The bottom line is this. You have to fight hard because you got to get confident. You can't okay. get confident. Don't worry about that. Okay. Keep your composure. What's your like? They numbered the gym. Okay. That's what, all what, it is. When you touch that ass, when you touch that ass, we're going to bring off, we're going to break his ass. Not much happened in the way of damage done with punches. One little wrestling match. Most, fight, most fighters would have gone down there, but these fellas do have a lot of athletic ability and retain their balance. Well, after all the punches we've seen thrown in the earlier fights, that might have been a little disorienting to some of you fans. Judah throwing 28, Mayweather throwing 26. They had combined for only 54 punches. Jose Cotto threw that many in about the first 30 seconds uh, of his fight against Juan Diaz. And uh, right. having landed six punches, a couple more than... Step back, step back. Uh, then Floyd Mayweather, Judah, as I said, seemed to get the better of what was a very even and tactical round. Now there are two quick left hooks up top by Floyd Mayweather, and Judah kind of smiles at him. Straight right hand to the body by Mayweather for the moment as though he just wants to land something. Judah is, is obviously holding back. He hasn't thrown any combinations. He hasn't thrown any real hard punches. Richard Steele watched closely and carefully and decided nothing happened. The question was whether Mayweather's glove or knee were going to touch the canvas. I think his glove touched the canvas. His glove did touch the canvas. I don't know if it was a result of a punch or not. Well, I, I would have I counted that as a knockdown because he did get punched at that moment. I'm racking my brain to try to remember if Floyd Mayweather's ever been knocked down. Well, he went down once, you may recall, when he had a bad hand and, and, he's, and he damaged it in the fight. Right. And the pain was so excruciating, he went down on a knee. That was in his hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan, against Carlos Famous Hernandez. There's a good quick right hook inside by Judah. Left hand to the body, and Judah continues to look upstairs. Firing his jab, he hasn't really landed the jab yet, but he's occupying Floyd with that work. Floyd's trying to hit him with that left hook, double left hook, for some reason. I think he feels that works great against a, a southpaw like that. A lot of people believe the left hook is even more effective than the right against the south cross. For me, I think both punches. I think a left hook, right hand. That's the combination. I think what it seems to me what Judah is doing is trying to be very resourceful, not letting go, not trying, trying desperately not to give any openings to Mayweather. Can he win a fight doing that for 12 rounds? There's a good quick left hand inside by Zab Judah. Landed it flush on Mayweather's jaw. You don't see that very many times. It, it was almost like an uppercut. The good body shots there by Judah. Zab's had a pretty good first two rounds against Floyd Mayweather. And got in the right hand as Mayweather was approaching at the end of the round. And the Judah fans in the crowd are very happy with what they've seen. Don't worry, keep pressing. Keep pressing. He don't want to fight, keep pressing. Keep doing what you're doing. Take, keep trying to touch the body too. Keep pressing on the right. Keep pressing on the right hand on, on the right hand side. Don't worry. Keep pressing. Don't worry about that. You just keep pressing. Was this a knockdown? The right yeah, glove definitely the, the touched right, the canvas. The right glove def definitely touched the canvas. Yeah, can it, it could have called. Call it a knockdown, but I don't know if it would have been a two-point round. And I believe Judah won the round anyway, so it doesn't appear that it will influence the scoring. Maybe, maybe he'd have gotten an extra point if that had been ruled a knockdown. But we go forward on into round three. 
you heard uh, Mayweather, Roy, uh, Ray, Mayweather's trainer, his uncle, say in the corner he doesn't want to fight, go after him. And what he's picking up on is something I remarked on earlier, that Judah is fighting very well under control. And now Mayweather is starting to attack. No question, there's a different Floyd Mayweather mentality now as round three gets underway. He jumped into the corner to fire the straight right hand. Zab's waiting on that. He's waiting to throw that uppercut. I think that's that's the answer for that quick right of Floyd Mayweather. He's left uppercut. Yes. Well, anybody who watched Mayweather over the course of recent years would have seen how the straight right hand became more and more the dominant weapon. the Zab Judo who fought Carlos Baldemir in New York, at least not so far. It reminds us of how he had a horrid outing against Rafael Pineda here in Las Vegas, a fight he could very easily have lost before going to St. Louis and knocking out Corey Spinks to take the welterweight title. So maybe he needs Lennox, as you were suggesting in a conversation at dinner earlier this evening, maybe he needs the bad fight to get him into position to fight a good one. Yeah, what happens when, you know, when 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 you have a lot of people that says that you're not you're going to lose and that you're the underdog. That motivates a lot of boxers and especially, you know, I'm one of those boxers as well. You know, you, you say I'm not going to do well. I'm I'm set to go out there and do well. I have to prove I have to prove prove you wrong. Mayweather jumps forward and lands a jab. Great fighters do it virtually every time out. Judah with a quick left hand, partially blocked by Floyd Mayweather. The body shots got through, though. Little right hand uppercut inside by Mayweather as Judah decided to go to the body. Left hook to the body by Mayweather. Mayweather blocking Judah's shots with his gloves there. Misses over the top with the right hand. Great right hand lands there for Mayweather. Right, right. Step back, step back. That was the first wing shot that Judah took Punch, get out. trying Punch, to connect get out. on the head of Mayweather. And a good left hook inside by Mayweather, both to the head and to the body. Another little left hook. Now jumping over the top of the left hook. Lands a straight right, slides into the corner. Judah almost had another crack at a big power punch. Listen to me, bro. Listen to me. All that shit he's doing is scared. He had a fight. Yo, you gotta let your hands go. Don't worry, he can't hurt you. He can't hurt you in fight mode. Boom, boom. Punch three, four. Boom, boom, boom. The more you hit him, the more he's gonna run. Don't let him sit, don't let him sit there. Come over top. Shoot, he's stealing shots. Okay? Hands up. When I touch that head, keep pressing. Keep pressing that motherfucker to the body. And keep going. Yeah, yeah, look for it. Keep doing what you just did. Right. Keep going. Take, keep taking your time. That, they can't because he can't fight going backwards anyway. Keep pressing. Keep pressing him downstairs. Keep breaking him down. All right. Keep up. Floyd very eager to get at Judah now. You don't often see him lunging off balance in that way. The third round seemed clearly to be Mayweather's best round so far. By CompuBox numbers, he landed 15 out of 35 to 7 out of 34 for Judah. Mayweather 12 of 26 power shots in the third round. He was much more aggressive than in the preceding two stanzas. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Look at Jim, 29, 28, two rounds to one, Zen Judah. Jim, let, let me comment on one thing first. The, the size of the gloves, up to 154, the gloves got to weigh eight ounces. Now, I know a million people are probably going to tell us that Zab Judah is wearing smaller gloves than Floyd Mayweather. They both weigh eight ounces. They're different gloves. Big left hand over the top by Judah. He believes he's got no other hurt. Crowd is going wild for Judah. He landed a straight left cross flush. The left-handed land, the left landed, the rest of the blows were grazing or didn't land. But Floyd Mayweather was hit with a big shot there. You don't see it very often. He's behind on Harold Letterman's scorecard. I'm not sure we've ever seen that at this stage of a fight against somebody like Zab Judah. And the bottom line is, we've got 
close competition in Las Vegas. May body shot by Mayweather. Mayweather hasn't really been challenged since Jose Luis Castillo four years ago. You see when Mayweather throws that straight right, he's just throwing the straight right and falling in. There's nothing that comes after that punch. Here he tried the left hook afterward. But you're right, Lennox. Most times he's thrown the straight right and, and, and wound up in a clinch. In. Yeah. Right. Kind of a John release thing. <laughs> Not what we would have expected from Floyd Mayweather Jr. Well, I think it's because the left-handedness of Judah it gives him a look that I don't know if he's solved yet. It also puts him very close together. Judah over the top with a straight left hand. Sneak that one through the guard, dude. Mayweather scraping Judah to the body from behind almost. Big left hook attempt by Mayweather. Right. Keep it clean. Watch your hand. Right hand hook by Zab Judah. Good counter punch. Those who suggested that Judah's southpaw style, hand speed, and athletic qualities could give Mayweather the kind of trouble he's never seen before have been right so far. Good quick left hook by Mayweather there. When you're a great athlete, you can find ways to improvise and land on the target. That's what Mayweather did with that little left hook. Judah jabbing and working his shoulder back and forth, giving Mayweather a difficult picture. You hear cheers in the background for Judah. He is a five to one underdog. Undoubtedly, a lot of that comes from people who have right. taken the odds. Mayweather landed a crisp left hook to punctuate the round. Zab is doing well in this fight. I mean, he's staying composed. He's not being too wild. He's very focused, and, and this is what you want. Do so, you, you trust me? When you let your hands go, he's going to run. He's going to back up. But you got to let depth, you got to let power go, Zab. You got to give me two or three sequels. One, two, three, four. Boom, boom. Double your shots up. Two hooks. Keep, body shots keep now. walking keep to him. Keep touching him to the body. And keep walking to him. When you keep pressing, he can't fight. Take him to your left. Take him to your left. That's the punch that got the crowd excited. Yeah, go, Larry. Yeah, these are not hurting punches, but they are definitely big scoring punches. In the lower left of your screen, you saw the huge Rhythm and Blues star Usher getting excited about all that. Steve Wynn was sitting right in front of him, incidentally. A lot of famous faces in the crowd here. Round five begins, and in the CompuBox numbers that you saw between rounds, there was one astonishing stat. Zab Judah has landed 57% of his power punches so far. Now, what's misleading about that is that he's only thrown 44. Mayweather has thrown, by CompuBox count, almost twice as many power punches. As the fight goes on, that may make a difference. You heard Joel, Joel Judah, Zab's father, asking him to let his hands go and saying when you do it and throw those power punches, he's going to back away. Funny enough, that's exactly the same thing Roger Mayweather across the ring has been saying to his nephew. When you unleash your power punches, he's going to back away. Right hand over the top by Mayweather. He sneaks in a little left hook. Increasingly, Mayweather is the aggressor in the fight. It's always hard to box a southpaw. I've never boxed one, but I know I've sparred with a couple. No, hold it, well, Michael no, hold Moore it. didn't quite make it as far as that fight with you that uh, some expected when he uh, won the heavyweight championship, because of course he ran into a little bump in the road called George Foreman. There's a straight right hand flush for Floyd Mayweather. He is starting to get his offensive game together. That's one of the few times, maybe the first time, that he's really hit Judas squarely. Caught him with a flush right hand and sneaked in another left hook there. Judah misses over the top. Mayweather's accuracy is beginning to come to the fore. Another right hand lands for Mayweather. Zab should definitely keep his hands a bit higher because when you've got a quick guy in there, you don't want to really give him any too much chances. Mayweather is beginning to hammer Judah with body shots. A left and a right along the ropes there. 
Yuta is fighting less, and as a result, taking more leather. Floyd's definitely mixing up his attack now. He's throwing to the body. And like I said, that right hand, he's going to be throwing it all night. He's very effective with it. And you're absolutely right. You saw Judah trying the left uppercut after one of the right hands. There's no question that the strategy to try to stop Floyd's right hand is to burn him with uppercuts. Now, you tell me what he's doing What's now. What's that? This is just a different style. He's saying, well, well what, that, uh, what that is, is he's, he's hurt. He's been hit. He's been tagged. And he's trying to give a new look. And it, it doesn't mean a thing. Judah seems almost to be trying to taunt Mayweather, and he lands a left hand, and now he's talking to Floyd. And he catches him with a little right hook. Big left hand for Judah, his best punch of the round, and he taunts Mayweather one more time before leaving the corner. Now, that round was all Mayweather until the last 20 seconds. But you gotta do that as much as you just now. He's nothing, Zab. He's not, no. Zab, he's nothing. But you gotta let him dominate you. He's gonna pot shoot you all night. You let him get off fight. When he let go, do come back. Just do jab. Come back with something. Don't let him hit you and get away. You got to keep it. That's what I say. Hands right here. He's my boy, I told you. Don't stop walking. You had his ass then. Don't let the bitch get go confident. Just cough it up. Just take your time. Well, you gonna give it up then. Everybody talk. Here is Mayweather having his best round, landing flush on Judah. Judah looked worried about the punches, but took them. Hey, there's my new best friend. <laughs> I met Jay-Z last night. I was hanging with the man. All right. I am hip. Jay-Z was very cool, a nice man, and uh, one of the many Huge stars from the rap and hip-hop worlds who are here on the scene tonight. Hour and five, Mayweather 18 out of 30 by CompuBox count, Judah three of 16. But the three were all in the last 20 seconds. Judah hammering to the body. Earlier in the fight, Mayweather wasn't bothering to lift his left shoulder in defense of his chin as he's done so often in the past. In the last couple of rounds, he's gone back to that discipline, and that has slowed Judah down just a little bit. Good left hook to the body by Mayweather. Judah tries to retaliate immediately with a right hook to the body. measuring now, he's trying some good straight punches. He's measuring, he just wants to get the, that punch in there accurately. Still relying on that straight right. And Judah is, seems more determined to defend himself than to punch at this time. Keeps throwing the jab out there, keeps getting it caught by Floyd Mayweather's white gloves. Judah trying to reach for something upstairs. Mayweather steps in with a right. Body, body, body. Left hand over the top by Judah. Didn't land. Good defense by Mayweather. He's terrific. He's just too quick. Hard to catch him with a clean punch. Left hook landed solidly for Mayweather. Just scoring. Just putting leather on him. Mayweather definitely wants to stay close to Jab for some reason. He just wants to stay real close to him and give him that kind of pressure. Well, I think deep in his heart, Floyd Mayweather believes that Zab Judah can't handle pressure. And one reason he believes that is because Judah shrunk from the media process preceding the fight. Mayweather was relaxed and comfortable enough to spend all the time with the reporters that they wanted, and he said repeatedly, what the heck is wrong with Zab? <laughs> Judah took a real good left hook at the end of that round. 
Don't be second, be first. Keep walking. Keep walking. All you got to do is keep walking. It's still a little bit outside of the, outside of the street, but get close to him. Okay? Keep walking. That's what I'm going to say. I'm trying to do that. Don't, don't no, worry. Just, just keep your right hand up. When you go in, keep your right keep hand up. Keep your right hand up, man. You try to look. He's stealing shots. Oh, hook shots. All right. Oh, that, oh, he's trying to walk the jail. Then he's trying to go into the body. He's trying to break your body down. Okay. Listen. You got some in? Take your time. Okay. You got me? Three, four. Three, four. Okay. Three, four. Three, four. Let's go. Keep your right hand up. No. You know, Mayweather has called Judah a hothead in the sense that he, he lacks discipline and goes a little crazy and away from whatever he's trying to do in the ring. But Judah has kept very focused in this ramp, in this fight, and that's why he's staying in it. You know, funny that you said it, Lennox. The combination that seems really to be working for Mayweather now, more and more as the fight goes on, is straight right hand, followed by the left hook. As you said, both punches can work. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? I'll get Jim. 57, 57, three rounds apiece. I got it all even. Jim, I got to tell you something. The guy that gets off first is always landing a better punch. I don't know why, but if you watch this real close like I am, right. the so guy that throws that first punch seems to get in a better shot. Floyd Mayweather's won the last two rounds by winning the first two minutes of the last, of the last two rounds. Zams come on strong in the final minute. Anyway, 57, 57, all even. I have it. Three, two, and one for Mayweather. I think Zab should definitely get off the ropes at this point. You don't really want to make uh, Floyd Mayweather just pick you apart because that's what he's doing. He's just picking his, his spots and taking advantage of them. Definitely There's get blood in Zab up. Judah's mouth and blood coming from Judah's nose now. And wonder, that's the product of the accurate punching by Floyd Mayweather. Uh, and you, you have to wonder whether the body punches are slowing him down a little bit. Otherwise, why would he do that? Why would he go in the corner that way? I spoke to perennial contender Demarcus Corley before the fight. He has fought both men in the ring and lost to both. Corley spent the last several weeks as a sparring partner for Floyd Mayweather in Mayweather's camp. He said the focus in training every day was body, body, body. Corley said to me, he said, after what I've learned from Floyd in this camp, I have a new regimen. I'm doing 500 sit-ups a day. Well, there is blood coming out of the nose and mouth of Judah now. And there'll be more of it after that big right hand, the most solid power punch of the fight so far for Floyd Mayweather. And you said it right, Lennox, last round. Floyd is measuring him and finding his spots. Got off the ropes. That was good, Lennox. Should he be throwing more punches? Too? He should be definitely throwing more punches. Right now, he's he's trying to he's trying to wait. I think he's waiting a bit too much. He's he's allowing Floyd to get ahead of the game right now, and he should be out there throwing some punches. And like Mayweather, and, and that punch was partially blocked. Mayweather is light years more comfortable in the ring now than was the case in the first three rounds. Yeah, he's a lot better right now. He's he's, he's real comfortable right now. The only question is, is he too comfortable? Will he allow Judah to find the way back in? And there's a good left hand over the top to punctuate the round for Zab Judah, but it was mostly a Mayweather round. Give me a towel, give me a towel, give me a towel, towel. Yeah, yeah, you're strong, you know what I'm saying? You're strong. All right, but listen, you gotta let your hands go. You let, you, Zab, you can hurt this kid. Let your hands go. He's gonna smile. But don't, kid, don't let him walk down and hit you. He goes, he gonna touch you and he gonna go off the push easy, easy. I'm trying to bleed. Easy, easy. Okay, okay. Easy. Relax, relax, relax. Relax, baby. Relax. Relax. Listen to me. Four or five. You tired? You feel tired? Nah, I'm good, baby. So you gotta let your hands go. Don't let them down there. Don't. Judah threw just eight punches in that round, according to Punch Stat, and landed five. That tells you that he is defensive. That. Mayweather is starting to get his measure and that he is afraid to let his hands go. So you come to a fight, you have a ticket, and you need an usher. Well, there he was. 
In round seven, Judah landed 52% of his power shots, but that was five of eight. Larry, power shots, five of eight. He actually did try a large number of jabs or some jabs in the round. I read that wrong, then. Yeah, thank but, you for correcting me. But the bottom line is, your point is quite correct. Mayweather is the rising tide, and Judah is less and less active as the fight goes on. The question now is whether Judah is going to start taking more chances or whether he's going to stay in this pocket uh, where he can stay in the fight but probably can't win it. If you notice, Floyd has his hands up by his chin. That means the, the quickest... Anytime he throws a punch, it's going to be a quick punch and straight to the target. There are so many guys who think they can gain some offensive advantage by having their hands low around their waist, Lennox. They're no. cooling themselves, Don't right? Yes. Well, there are sophisticated they fighters who can do that against many opponents. Uh, using their shoulders for defense. Well, Judah's still talking, but while he's talking, Mayweather is strafing him with power punches. The left hook was perfect, and the right is landing with greater and greater frequency, and those are two body shots that clearly got to Judah. Zab's talking right now and saying, you ain't hurting me. Yeah. Well, he's talking well, if Floyd to wanted to reply, he could just say, I'm winning the round. How do you like that? Yeah, he's talking the talk, and Mayweather is fighting the fight. Good straight right hand. So I'm just deciding to put up his hands now. That's a good idea. And a good right hand to the body by Judah. And he pushes Mayweather back off of him. And does it again. And now he'll try to body him off one more time. Now the Mayweather fans are chanting, Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. We've had chants on both sides. Judah, yeah. Judah, Judah, Floyd, Floyd, you know, Floyd. Which reminds me, Jim, this is the first fight that Mayweather has in Las Vegas where he lives in four years. He's, he, he hasn't been able to capture his hometown fans. Maybe he's done it. That was a good body punch by Judah. He's had two or three excellent body punches here, and he landed that left uppercut, and he just missed with a right over the top, and finally he's throwing a lot more punches, which is what most of us, I think, believe he needs to do. After, after Zab throws a combination, Floyd Mayweather is still there. He's stay, right in front of his face. He's saying, throw more. Yo, you throw punches at me, you're gonna hurt him. You throw, I'm telling I can't tell you no more. You gotta let your hands go, man. Yo, you gotta get it, you gotta grip down. Look at me. You gotta grip down. And like, ah, ah, ah. breathe. Ah, ah, ah. One, two, you sketch. Okay, keep your hands right here. You shoot back, you shoot boom. The body shot, the body shot is gonna shut his ass down. It's gonna make him quit. All right? Dig the body. When you get close, dig the body. Then bring the hook back. He don't want no more. He don't want no more. No, that bitch ready to quit. He's gonna make him quit on the stroke. Talk too much. Talk no, he's not. He don't Uncle Roger talking about that, the body shots, followed by that. Oh, we could be headed for a 12 round fight here. And again, as Lennox pointed out, they're wearing leather trunks. <laughs> but you're getting heavy. And Mayweather has fake fur on. Along with it. Through round eight, average power punches per round. Judah, five out of 13. Is 13 enough? Floyd Mayweather, 11 out of 25. In other words, Punch, by CompuBox right, count, Lennox, Mayweather's throwing go, twice Judah. as many power punches as Judah. Judah needs to throw more, right? Absolutely. That's what his father was saying. The last 30 seconds of the preceding round were a pretty good primer for what Judah needs to do. But of course, it takes a lot of energy to fight that way. Jab, jab, right hand, they all land. The way Mayweather is fighting now just shows his brilliant versatility. He's coming in like a brawler behind those gloves. He can outbox you, he can outpunch you, he can outbrawl you. And Mayweather landed three straight devastating body shots. And Lennox, you make a great point. 
about how Judah throws combinations and Floyd is still right there in front of him. This is only Floyd Mayweather's second fight at 147 pounds. What he's basically saying with his body language is, Zab, I can take any punch you can throw. My chin is way good enough for this. He's also saying his defense is great. And once he's, you know, he keeps his hands close to his face. He's not getting hit with no silly shots. And after Zab throws a combination, he's right there. He steps right back and puts his hands up in front of his face and says, let's go, let's go. And the blood continues to trickle from the mouth of Zab Judah. question that I have in my mind, Jim, as I watch this, is Judah going to be satisfied to go the distance and count that as his victory? Go holding, go holding. Well, if he believes in his heart that he's fighting the best fighter in the world, maybe that would be enough for him. But it's getting increasingly worse for Judah as Mayweather is simply chasing him around the ring and punishing him now. It's a round in which Mayweather has seemed to land virtually every punch he wanted to. Mayweather's looking more comfortable in this fight right now, and he's doing what he needs, what he wants to do. Basically, he's just stepping after Judah. And Judah's face is showing the punishment. Remember, a lot of judges find it irresistible to score the blood. There's no blood on Floyd. <laughs> Judah finally got in one good punch. After having been ripped for most of the round, now he lands a right hand, and Mayweather kind of grins at him. As if to say, oh, here's the late round flurry I've seen before. Now there is blood on Floyd, but it's Judah's blood. That's what Floyd has been guarding against. Even while he's been dominating Judah, he hasn't become reckless because he knows that Judah is looking now to land one of those wild punches. Zab, let me tell you something, man. Listen to me, man. You let you stand in too much like this. Get your movement. Wow, wow, wow. If it ain't nothing but a little pretty back, let your hands go. He ain't doing no patting you though. But you just don't load up every shot. Just let some shots go. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Keep letting your hands go. You understand me? Right. 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 And his right is might in that round. Toby Keith, big favorite of yours, right, Larry? Mm-hmm. Love Toby Keith's lyrics. I know you do. And uh, there is Urban Magic Johnson. Urban, of course, is from Lansing, Michigan. Floyd Mayweather is from Grand Rapids. And uh, they're going to be in business together because both are now represented by Hollywood's legendary William Morris Agency. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim. 87, 84, six rounds to three, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, I tell you something. It's one thing I love that he does that I'm, I'm sure the judges see. He measures you with that left hand. He leaves it out, and then all of a sudden, he throws a hook off it, just like he did right there. I mean, he's doing that, and Zab can't stop it. He's laying the great right hands to the body. Right. I think he's won five rounds in a row, six to three, Mayweather. Lennox, we see it over and over and over. The trainer implores his fighter to let his hands go. The fighter goes back into the ring and doesn't do it. Why? Because the trainer isn't getting hit, right? <laughs> True. It's, it's a lot easier than it looks. I mean, harder than it looks. And Floyd Mayweather is a brilliant counterpuncher, increasingly so in this fight. So Zab knows quite well, despite his fabulous speed, the quick hands that if he throws, he might get hit in return. Meanwhile, Mayweather is doing fine, leading the aggression. Now Judah begins to throw the punches his father wanted Break, to see. No holding down, no holding down. And I gotta hand it to Yoel tonight. He's not one of those father trainers who just stands in the corner and says, it's okay, son, everything's fine. He's trying to tell Zab the truth about the fight. Body shots again by Mayweather. One, two, three, and Judah backs off. Left to the body, left upstairs, right to the body. Break, step back, step back. So okay. far, Judah has at least redeemed his reputation for a glass jaw. Break, step back. He's taken a lot of hard, clean shots.
I just love the way uh, Floyd throws that double right hand. You don't really see that too much in boxing. He can even throw tri triple, triple right hands. As long as he comes back with the hook, that's going to make him a great boxer. Well, he's already a great boxer, that's for right, sure. Step back, step the number back, one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the sport, and the more you watch him, the more you appreciate him. Absolutely. First three or four rounds tonight Watch looked as though there. things could be rocky. Statistically, since then, Mayweather has dominated. Zab is just waiting to counter punch right now. He's waiting for that yeah. great opportunity. Oh, and there's a low that blow by that was a low blow. And Richard Steele pulls Zab to the off of Floyd Mayweather Jr. And Mayweather is badly hurt by the low blow. And now Roger Mayweather wants to come after Zab. And now Leonard Ellerbe wants Yoel to it. And a riot is going to break out in the ring. <laughs> Going first to the in that? the ring to try to break it up. Bunch of hotheads in there. to the police and local security to try to stop the madness that is going on in the ring. Shades of Riddick Bowe and Andrew Galata. Roger, so Maywe Roger Mayweather triggered that, believing, I believe, that Judah deliberately punched him low because he was taking such a savage beating. Absolutely. And that was the wrong thing for him to do. He will definitely be fined. He may be, he may be thrown out of the fight. I'm talking about Roger Mayweather triggering this fuss here and unfortunately taking people's minds off the fact that Floyd Mayweather was doing a masterful job Brilliant. in the ring. Let's take a look at what happened. There's the low blow. And I'm afraid you can see why Roger Mayweather might have thought what he thought. And then he hit Floyd on the back of the head as well. So there's the, there's the body blow, which was right on the cup. Here's the right hand to the back of the head. And this is part of why Floyd Mayweather's uncle, Roger Mayweather, reacted the way he did. Yeah. What do you think, Lennox? Be honest. Was it an intentional low blow? Was that intentional? Well, the punch in the back of the head was definitely intentional. And a horrible foul, right? Yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad foul. This is why you have to always protect yourself in, in boxing. Yeah, and, and it's also a street move. If I can't beat you one way, I'll get you another way. Well, if it was on purpose, it is as classless as anything we've seen from a fighter in recent years. And now, let's look at Roger Mayweather. There, that's the reason why Roger Mayweather is going to be disqualified and taken away. And then Yoel Jota Yoel Judah came, across, came the ring. across and that really ignited it. And that's when Leonard Ellerby, one of Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s advisors, got into it with Yoel Juda. Well, we have just learned, Jim, that Roger Mayweather has been thrown out of the corner. Five seconds are remaining in round 10. When the fight resumes, five seconds will remain in round 10. And now the crowd's more excited than ever. Well, they were observing for the last four or five rounds a one-sided massacre. And... Uh, this got their juices flowing again. And the two fighters touch gloves, which is a useful start toward whatever's going to happen next. Now and it's going to be on. It is on. Be on right? It is on. <laughs> who, will, who will lose their poise in this situation? Mayweather wants to touch Judah's glove. Richard Steele makes Judah do it. Five seconds left in the round. Judah kind of looks at Steele. And that's the end of the round. Before all the 
mayhem broke out. That round was totally dominated by Floyd Mayweather Jr. This is the last one anyway. Give me the water. Huh? This is lag, please. Is that lag, no, I think it's a This is lag. Oh, it's okay. Keep, listen, keep your composure. We got, no, no, oh, you ain't gonna, you it's fine, just relax. Okay, no, no, I'm just saying. Just a minute. Go, go, let's go on that Three minutes. You will give utter, over, utter, over, utter, utter, over. Sam, 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 move your head. Okay. Winning the fight easy, I know. They give it a shot and they deliver. That's what. But two hours, two hours. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The new lead voice in Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s corner is Rafael Garcia. Now Richard Steele's got a job on his hands for the next two rounds as Floyd Mayweather and Zab Drew to try to finish up this fight. Harold Letterman's card now shows Mayweather with a solid lead in the fight. Yeah, and Floyd, as I said earlier, he's too smart, too poised. He's not going to try to retaliate. He's going to try to punish Judah for that. Yeah, I believe the same thing Great. as well. He's definitely not going to. He's definitely not going to retaliate. You know, that's not a wise thing to do for a good boxer. But it's going to make it an interesting fight right now. This chant is Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. Lennox, is there any chance that Floyd is still bothered at all by the Great. low blow and the foul to the back of the head? No, he's, 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 a, he's all about business. Right now, he just wants to go in there and, and win the fight and, and go relax. No re remaining physical damage then, in other words. He's not still hurting or anything. Well, if he's hurting, he's, he's definitely good at doing a good job of hiding it. But uh, I don't think I would be hurting at this point. You know, there's too much. You've been hit right on the cup like that? Yeah, right. Right on the cup. Any way to describe what that feels like or? It, it feels real bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. Punch it, get out! And I imagine that Pull it takes your breath away completely, it. right? Well, it depends how you get hit. Sometimes you can get uh, hit real bad where, uh, you know, it affects your legs. In this case, it didn't affect his legs. It probably just hurt for a minute and then now he's all better. But he, like I said, Floyd is serious. He's just all about the game. And he just wants to go, on, go, on, go in there and conduct his work pro properly. Well, given the difficulties he experienced in the first four rounds tonight, this has been another great show of professionalism by Floyd Mayweather. He found the tactical avenues necessary to turn the fight around. He asserted himself in the middle rounds in the right way. And he has moved toward dominance in the late rounds. First time we've seen a fight interrupted like that and then started over here in Las Vegas since Fan Man landed in the ring in Evander Holyfield Riddick Bow 2, November 6, 1993. <laughs> Relatively uneventful round 11. Just more of the same from Mayweather. Not going to give an opening to Judah, who it seems happy just to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Keep taking easy. him to the left. Keep, I would, yeah, I want to stop him. Yeah, listen. You're just looking for a way out, but don't worry about that. Go back to doing what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, that's all right. That's best to do. Let him no, 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 no. Listen. Go back, go back and make the it. last yeah, and final round. Go back and make it, make it. You work too hard, Zap. That's right. Too hard, Zap. Last and final round. Hold the floor. Hold the floor. Come on, let's go, kid. You the champ. Yeah. 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 Richard Steele's peculiar locution yeah. 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 Floyd Mayweather, I think I heard him say to Leonard Ellerby, I want to stop him. He did say that. He definitely wants to go out there and stop him. Is that him. a good idea? You know, he's got a different mindset. He definitely wants to go out there and show 
inflict some damage on, on, on Zab just because he punched him low. I know it's showmanship to a certain degree, but I have to be impressed that Mayweather reached out and hugged Cheetah instead of just the traditional touching of gloves to begin the 12th. He was trying to say, okay, let's calm down here. Mayweather definitely wasn't trying to stop Judah in the last round when he only threw 45 punches. But he landed 19 of them. Good left hook by Mayweather. Good straight left hand by Judah. And Mayweather grins at Judah, which shows you it was a good Judah straight left hand. This time Judah misses over the top as Mayweather ducks perfectly. Zaba is realizing this is the last round, so he's definitely trying to get that left hand in there. He needs to throw combinations. Punch it, get out. Punch it, get yeah, one punch at a time isn't likely to do it. No, especially against Floyd May Mayweather because he's just too fast. Blocked by the right glove. Having seen what happened in the first 20 seconds, Mayweather now utterly conscious of the fact that Judah wants to land one big left hand. Straight right hand over the top lands for Mayweather. Pressure, pressure, pressure. The last several rounds, Mayweather has constantly stalked Judah. And stayed on him, not allowing space. Dogging him, Lennox, as you would say. Yeah, he's just keeping up the pressure. Right now, he's trying something different. He's letting Judah come after him, realizing Judah has to come after him. Now, I think he's hoping to find one opening for one big shot. I agree. I think that he's hoping Judah will, will try to sell out a little bit and throw more punches, and he can find a way to counter him one big time. There you go. Come to me. Come to me. Well, he's got 30 seconds to do that if, he ha if he's going to do it. Come to me, hit me on the chin, he said. Punch inside and get out. There it is again. Not enough time, not enough time to do it. to the last 20 seconds of the fight to sort of give it one desperation shot. Yeah, that was just to show when he needed to do it in the middle to the late rounds, he laid back because he didn't want to get hit. I thought he did a better job than I believed he was capable of, but at the end of the night, he was simply outclassed. Well, one thing's for sure, against a great fighter, Lennox, one of the best ways to get hit is to fight as though you don't want to, right? Right, definitely. <laughs> it's hitting the other guy that keeps you from getting hit, by and large, right? So there's the hug from Yoel Judah to his son, Zab. And you can see the marks on Zab's face that show you the punishment he took from Mayweather in the last six rounds of the fight. And there is pretty boy Floyd looking pretty much the same as ever. Harold, what is your final score on the bout? 116-112. Eight rounds to four, Floyd Mayweather. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Round 10, when Floyd Mayweather got hit low, okay, and he hopped away, obviously Richard Steele must have called timeout because when Roger jumped in the ring, Richard Steele obviously could have disqualified Floyd Mayweather. Correct. The, the rules say that your second is not allowed to come in while the round is on, but when Floyd hopped away, Steele sent Zeb Judah to a neutral corner. He obviously called timeout, and they used a little discretion to let the fight continue. In any case, 116-112, Mayweather. Good discretion. Right, Harold? Good discretion. Thank Correct. you. You agree that uh, Mayweather won the fight, Lennox? Yes, I do. I think he boxed a great fight. Um, intelligent. You know, it didn't get out of hand. He kept, kept his focus. Didn't let that low blow do anything to him, and... Um, did what he had to do, win the fight. You saw that on Harold Letterman's card, Zab Judah won three of the first four rounds. We'll find out whether the official cards jibe with that, but let's take a look at the progress of the fight. 
Starting in round two. Round one was an extremely tactical round. Not much happened. One fighter landed six punches. The other landed four. A Judah right hand in round two. Then a Judah straight left in the fourth round. Judah had a big round in the fourth round and looked as though he might really have Mayweather back on his heels. But then Floyd began to turn the fight around and landed straight right hands, such as in the seventh. Then in the tenth round, the near riot that broke out after a now dominated Zab Judah threw a low blow and then very clearly hit Floyd Mayweather, seemingly intentionally on the back of the head. As Harold Letterman told you, once timeout was called by Richard Steele, that's when Roger Mayweather jumped into the ring. Yoel Judah came across the ring to talk to Roger. Leonard Ellerby got in the ring as well, and a melee broke out. They finally resumed fighting, and in the 12th round, Zab Judah could not close the show as Floyd Mayweather invited him repeatedly in the closing seconds of the fight to hit him on the chin by way of saying, Hey, sucker, you can't do it. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official decision on this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards. Dave Moretti scores at 116-112. Jerry Roth, 117-111. Glenn Hamada, 119-109 to the winner by unanimous decision and new champion still undefeated from Grand Rapids, Michigan, pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. The number one pound for pound fighter in the sport maintains his unblemished record with what turns out to be another relatively easy win. Harold Letterman had it 116-12. My heavens, Glenn Hamada had it 119-109. So at least one of the three judges saw total dominance by Floyd Mayweather. Here are final CompuBox numbers. Judah landing a total of 82 punches in the fight and Floyd Mayweather landing 106 more of them, even though Floyd threw 40 fewer punches than Judah. So final, final CompuBox numbers show Judah landing at less than half the rate in almost, almost a third of the rate of Floyd Mayweather. Uh, and in the power punch category, the dominance is even more clear as Mayweather landed 90, or excuse, uh, excuse me, 86 more power punches, threw 133 more power punches, and landed at the significantly higher percentage. When you land nearly 50% of your power punches, you're going to win the fight unless the other guy does something extremely off the board, and Judah wasn't able to do that. Larry Merchant with the winner, Mr. Pound for Pound, Floyd Mayweather. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Floyd. First few rounds went differently than most of your fights. Why? Uh, well, you got yeah, realize, I knew Zab Judah was a, uh, a front one, a front runner. But first of all, I want to thank God for this victory. Thank all the people who support Floyd Mayweather. I knew Zab, I knew Zab was a front runner. What do you mean by that? A front runner is he, he's strong for the first six rounds. And after that, he gas out. So you were letting him go and just examining what he was doing and was measuring him? Relax and keep my composure. We are, that was our game plan. We knew Zab was going to come out strong. We was going to relax, take our time, and stick to the game plan. Let's take him, you know, deep, deep and drown him. And, uh, you know, if, that, if it, we didn't have no confrontation in the ring, you know, the fight would have been over. As you were beating him up in the middle and late rounds, he was talking. What was he saying to you? Oh, uh, we come from the same school. Uh, Call me a bitch. You a bitch. But you know, you know, he he say what he say. You know, I'm I'm just happy to be a four-time world champion of four different weight classes. Let's talk about this fight. Uh, okay, we get late in the fight. You're you're cleaning him out. You're uh -huh. blooding his nose and his mouth. Uh -huh. Did you think he went below the belt deliberately to to get even with you? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't want to say anything bad about Zab. It was a great fight. He's a great fighter. Do you think your uncle, your trainer, thought that, and that's why he, he got so excited? My uncle already said he was going to do that. He did? My uncle said that two days ago. He said, you know, once you get the beating on him, he's going to do something dirty to cause a confrontation, and, you know, and we're going to have a problem. And we knew this was going to happen, but, you know, this is boxing. I just want to be a gentleman. I respect Zab, Jude. I respect this camp. And tonight he made me respect this fight game, but I feel great. I just want to, you know, continue to beat the best they got out there. Was he a little bit more solid and less less odd and weird out there than you expected? Um, I hurt my hand in the fight. Actually, I hurt my right hand. That's why I wasn't using my right so much towards the end. I hurt my right hand early on in the fight. 
but um, I kept using it. I mean, you know, I went back to the corner, and said, keep using it, keep going to the body, keep breaking them down. And, you know, I wasn't using no power shots. Now, all I was doing was trying to break them down and punish him. You said you wanted to punish him. You also said, said you wanted to knock him out. Are you disappointed you couldn't get him out no, of there? No, I think I could have got him out of there if the confrontation, because that's when I was pressing harder. But, you know, the, comp the, the confrontation uh, threw me out of my zone. I was in the zone. But once they, all that confrontation got going on in the ring, they threw me out of my zone. So you just felt you'll just win the last two rounds, glide through Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just box the last two rounds and just take the victory the best way. Thank you very much. Congratulations against it. Floyd. Thank you. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. Uh, Lennox Lewis, as the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sports, marketing power and popularity continue to grow. I can think of at least a half dozen fighters who might be watching him tonight and trying to figure out when they want to fight him to try to make that money and be a part of that big event. Oscar De La Hoya, Shane Mosley, Ricky Hatton, Miguel Cotto. There are quite a number of them. Who could beat him? I don't know. I don't see really anybody out there right now. He's too sweet right now. Floyd is, is, is a remarkable boxer. He shows great talent, great speed, and uh, it's going to be very difficult to beat him out there. Yeah, it's probably going to be, you know, until he develops the marketing power like De La Hoya has had, where it's, all right, I got to fight him for all that money whether I have a chance to win or not. Is Larry Merchant ready with the, uh, with the loser's ab, Judah? Yes, he is, I'm told. Let's go back into the ring. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Zab, give us your assessment of what went on in there tonight. You had the advantage after a few rounds, feel-out type of rounds. And then he seemed to dominate you once you got into the middle rounds. Well, I mean, I'll take no credit. I mean, I'll I, I make no excuses. First of all, I want to give um, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing me with the opportunity of being safe and coming out of the fight with. Second of all, um, Mayweather's a good fighter. He's quick. He got good hands. And, you know, I'll make no excuses. He's a, good, he, he's a better guy tonight. Your father was urging you to throw more punches throughout the fight. Yeah. Was he just too quick with his counter punches to for you to let go? No, I don't think that. I think that he was a very um, great defensive fighter. I think that, you know, uh, um, father's, father's defense, he kept a, a, a great uh, tight defense, and that was good. All right, tell us what happened when you hit him below the belt. I don't know if we have any... Uh, footage here, but you describe what happened at that point. Well, um, Larry, I'm not a dirty fighter, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't have to use dirty tactics to go in there and prove my thing, you know? I was aiming for the body, you know? It maybe was, was, a little, was, a, was a little low, and, and that's why I came back with another shot, because I didn't feel that I did it on purpose. And um, when I did that, Roger jumped in, and the trainer took a swing at me. So, I mean, you know, I'm a fighter, you know? I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the world title fight. My only reaction is to go ahead and go. Then he was choking me in the corner, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the security had my arms and he was choking me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm making no excuses, you know? May, May was a great fighter. Hope that down the line we could do, we could, we, we could do it again, and, that, um, and that's it. Do you feel that this fight, uh, taking Mayweather the distance, uh, redeemed the last fight and some of the other fights you've had in which you haven't been your best? Well, I think so. I mean, you know, everybody knows me that know me know, know that, you know, I can fight. That's one thing that I do best. And, um, you know, I mean, Carlos Bordenay was a whole different bracket fighter. He's a great fighter himself. Take nothing from him. But, you know, at this fight, I was just mentally prepared for something different than I was for the a New York fight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Larry. Uh, let's go back to the melee for a second, Lennox Lewis, because I'm told that Zab Judas promoter Don King has been loudly making the case in the ring that uh, Mayweather should have been disqualified because Roger jumped into the ring. You heard the discussion between Harold Letterman and myself when we signed off on the notion that it was good judgment, not bad judgment, for him not to be disqualified. Do you see any merit in the argument that Mayweather should have been disqualified because of what Roger did? You know what, as long as we, they got the fight back on and we were able to see a good fight once again, the last couple of rounds, they got it all sorted out and that was the main thing. I agree with you. In, in other words, it wouldn't have been good for the sport for this to end on the disqualification of a fighter who had just been hit on a low blow and hit in the back of the head, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. All right. Let's take another look just so we can once again get your expert opinion on all of this. Now, uh, Roger Mayweather jumps into the ring as you see there wanting to get at Zab, and obviously it's his belief that Zab intentionally hit Mayweather on the cuff and also intentionally hit him on the back of the head. You and I agreed it would be impossible to tell whether the low blow was intentional, but you can see that you're hitting the guy on the back of the head, right? 
Yeah, I mean, he punched him in the back of the head. But, you know, in the sport of boxing, you have to protect yourself at all times. Even if you get punched in, in punch low, you still have to protect yourself because the other guy out there is throwing punches. He's trying to take you out. Now, we heard Zab Judah complaining that Mayweather had been, quote, choking him in the corners. And incidentally, Floyd has done this throughout his career, where he takes his forearm and puts it against a fighter and pushes him back like that, often winding up with the hand under the throat. Is it illegal? Yeah, it's illegal. It, it's, it's illegal, but the ref has to warn you. You know, you can. It, I say to all, all the boxers, go out there and do it. And if the ref, ref warns you and stops you, you have to stop at that point. But if the ref ain't saying nothing, you know, keep on doing it. But stay in the confounds of the rules. Well, that's the way it all turned out. Larry Merchant now joins us back at ringside. And incidentally, thanks, Lennox. Great thank job tonight. Just lovely. terrific. Thank you. Larry, your uh, final thoughts on what happened between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Zab Judah. One way or another, Floyd Mayweather was going to win this fight. Uh, it was the other. <laughs> and I think it was uh, self-explanatory. Um, he's just too good a fighter f for somebody who comes su supposedly with as much speed as him to try to outspeed him. That's not the way anybody's going to get Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Well, what way they are going to get him remains to be seen. Didn't happen tonight. Hard to see somebody on the horizon who has the kinds of advantages that could translate into a victory yet over pretty boy Floyd. Let's take a look at the upcoming boxing calendar here at HBO. Very busy. April 22 from Mannheim, Germany. Chris Bird defends his portion of the heavyweight title against Vladimir Klitschko. Live on HBO at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. Airing again at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Immediately after each showing of Bird Klitschko on the 22nd. Stay tuned for Countdown to De La Hoya Mayorga. It's a documentary style behind the scenes look at the two men facing off next month. April 29, the 2006 debut of Boxing After Dark. First up, Asalina Freitas against Dahir Rahim in a lightweight fight. It's Rahim's first bout since his shocking upset of Eric Morales in September. And May 6, live on HBO pay-per-view, Oscar De La Hoya versus Ricardo Mayorga. Oscar's first fight in a year and a half, and he chooses to take on the unpredictable and dangerous Nicaraguan power puncher, Mayorga. All right, uh, Lennox, in the weeks since we were together in Atlantic City for James Tony against Asim Rachman, the heavyweight division shuffles the deck once again, and Sergei Lyachovic gets a victory over Lehman Brewster, which now puts yet another title belt in the hands of an Eastern European fighter. Where does Vladimir Klitschko stand in his journey as he gets ready to take on Chris Bird for a second time? He beat Bird in an easy decision six years ago. I think it's going to be an interesting fight because, uh, you know, since that fight, he's had two losses. And uh, he's got a great trainer in his corner, Emmanuel Stewart. And I think uh, he's got great boxing ability. He's the only boxer out there that really uses his footwork. And he's got a, different, a, a whole heap of different offenses that he can use. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting fight. I think he's, he wants to be the best heavyweight in the world. And uh, this is one step closer. Emmanuel Stewart says that what he did with you was, in essence, to get you to fight the way a big man should fight. Vladimir is six feet, seven inches tall. If Emmanuel can accomplish everything he wants to accomplish with Vladimir, and leaving aside the power of the right hand, he's never going to be able to punch like you. Is he going to wind up looking more and more like you in the ring? I think he's a great boxer. He's going to show some great boxing talent out there. Whether he can neutralize Chris is, is one question, but we're going to have to see it on the fight. All right. Chris Bird couldn't handle him six years ago, Larry Merchant. Got knocked down several times in the fight. It was an easy decision for Vladimir. What could be different this time? Well, they both changed. Uh, Klitschko has changed a little, something in his style, but also now he's perceived as uh, seriously flawed and vulnerable, whereas at that time he looked like the next big thing. Uh, and meanwhile, Bird has gotten older, a little bit more flat-footed, uh, uh, more willing to exchange punches. My guess is that he thinks he can go out there and somehow trap Klitschko and land a punch with all 215 pounds behind it and uh, hopefully end the fight. Who knows? We shall see. That's in Mannheim, Germany. Two weeks from now, April 22. The heavyweight division continues to try to move toward some reasonable definition. Chris Bird, still with a title belt in tow, taking on Vladimir Klitschko for the second time. Well, it was an interesting night. Very good fights. The favorites here were Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., 
Juan Diaz, Jorge Arce, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. All four favorites won. All of them at some moment or another facing some difficulty in the fight. All of them eventually rising to the fore with outstanding performances. At the end of the night, the star, once again, the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport. There's really no argument about that. Judah versus Mayweather has been brought to you by Caesars Palace Las Vegas. Live famously. Win Las Vegas Resort and Country Club by Corona Extra, miles away from ordinary. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. We'd like to thank the following magazine and internet partners. So now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.